Hey, DMBI.com. This is John. This report is for the 7th of September. And while the downturn continued, uh, we had white leading on the MBI. We had the slight magenta uh, rise, uh, but we didn't get the orange dip all the way. So I was uh, from not getting a full dip underneath on the DOC here with the orange below red. Um, and the magenta moving forward, we suggested that while there should still be weakness, um, supports would probably hold in range, and they pretty much well did. Uh, we had a nice boost, but it was sold out uh, pretty much uh, early on. We'll see that in the intraday charts. Not a surprise there. There's still a lot of headwinds uh, out there as to the complexity of, well, obviously the Fed is going to continue to do what it's doing, and you know the global energy situation is bad. You have a situation where you're promoting, like in California, EVs, and you're then telling people not to use power. And don't know how that's supposed to work when... <laughs> and this is the same situation that's taking place in Europe. It's the suggestion that somehow there's going to be just magic that uh, creates the power that is needed to run uh, not just industry, but uh, entire societies. NQ looking identical, a uh, little bit sharper move back up of white uh, MBI, and that could put uh, NASDAQ under a little bit more pressure than the S&P, so just a slight variance there worth noting. Um, we look at the euro, continues to make new lows, so uh, while it seems stable at this particular stage, uh, you're just another announcement, obviously, with Nord Stream not uh, returning until sanctions are lifted and now you're in the situation where if they decide to cut back in through any of the pipelines that are going through ukraine uh, it's just a devastating situation and it's reflected in where the currency is and there's no practical solutions other than just printing more money maybe making subsidies to people to help offset the massive increase in uh, prices uh, but that's not a long-term solution, and you know this is where we saw uh, some places, Poland and others, you know, in rapidly ramping up coal production. It's like, well, this is sort of the opposite of what they were hoping to achieve with their uh, initiatives, and um, doesn't look like there's any end to the Ukraine situation anytime soon. So this is going to continue to weigh on uh, everything, um, and that puts a little deflationary pressure, which is why we've seen the uh, Gold fade a little bit, not to mention that it's faded just because of uh, oil softening as well. When we look at uh, oil here, it's down at the lows, so this uh, helps alleviate the rate of increase. It doesn't change the fact that prices are elevated and not going to change. It's uh, just uh, not seeing what you would call the rapid rate of rise. So there's a slight dissociation at that particular stage. Um, this was an easy one. Uh, we've been promising uh, TLT, well, I have, uh, to break below that uh, lows that it had previously at the 108, and it just took some time. There's no reason why it should have taken as long as it did. There was uh, clear indications from way back uh, when we were well in the 130, 40 range that uh, rates were going to have to rise, and uh, this little faux pump right here where the market believed that uh, the Fed was going to ease again um, just was counter to everything they were saying. And sure enough, uh, here we are breaking that low. So yields are definitely are going to rise and there's no indication that the Fed is going to change that anytime soon because it believes that the economy is running good and everything's great. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, following the market lead uh, down dangerously here now at that uh, 18 level, uh, break down here and you could be dropping back to the 13s. Uh, so the luster of uh, the whole Bitcoin craze has sort of eased quite dramatically. From a 50K standpoint, you can see the turnaround uh, set up in there. We do have white pushing up pretty strong, but as long as that magenta leads. So from a short-term standpoint, we've seen the, the start of the turnaround. We recognize that uh, early on in the 5K. Here was that run-up that we saw in the morning that came through, and we started leading with a bunch of uh, white MBIs. So the first one, when you're above that 50, we're looking for the uh, 
50% retrace uh, at a minimum, and then uh, we got a secondary one with below the 25, and that one I expected the 0%, and sure enough, we got the 0%, and then the, just the cascade lower continued. Uh, after that oversold, we got a uh, nice DOC dip, uh, everything you want, uh, orange below red, green above red, um, steel short-term buyers above uh, the shorts and cyan, and cyan dipping towards the zero. And that led to a nice rally. Uh, just not sustainable. As we scroll across, we can see exactly how that began. A little bit of fade, dropped to the 50, came back up again. White led that one, and we spiked up with white as the magenta dipped below that 25. It held on, giving the belief that maybe the rally was going to continue, but uh, once that pivot again back into orange, cascade lower, and then it did it uh, a couple other times, and that's why this stayed uh, red uh, throughout that with the uh, white MBI leading. Uh, even though in this particular case, uh, defensively, you could cover those shorts under that 23% and uh, wait for Claire indication. It's just that uh, once you have a downturn, that momentum of it, uh, you're going to get that spike back up and then usually leads to a new low. That's precisely what it did. And then a little bit later on, uh, cut a little bit of that uh, rise coming back up with the strong MBI readings as well as uh, cyan under red DOC, which made that one so easy at this particular stage. It's like you've already got Cyan under red, the orange dip, there's nowhere that's going, but all the way up. And it should go to the 100%. In this case, it didn't fade it back a little bit, but the second run made it back uh, to a matching high, but still, uh, we had to have the dip of the 100% uh, a little bit lower to match it. And then as we came across um, later part of the day, faded, and they bought up the uh, fade right here in the post market. And it's been all buying in the morning. And we've seen this pattern though, repeatedly now where uh, the buys have come in and that it fades off during the regular session. And that's just part of that uh, intraday manipulation that you know you don't necessarily see. But all in all, the action has been incredible and great ranges. As always, though, you can look for me on Skype chat. Trade well. We'll talk in later.